So the Meat Show is coming to you from Swank Knightsbridge today, and we are in front of the Mandarin Oriental, one of the most exclusive hotels in all of London. Within that hotel is one of my favorite restaurants. It's Dinner by Heston Blumenthal. It is a restaurant that is informed and inspired by the heritage of British cooking, going back as far as there are British recipes. So you're going to get things from the 12th and the 13th century but sort of updates them for the modern palate and the modern sensibility. One of the dishes they're most renowned for is called meat fruit. I'm gonna go in there and talk to Ashley Palmer Watts and he's gonna tell me all about what this mysterious dish is. So before we get into it, what, I mean, what is meat fruit succinctly? Okay, so if we start off with the finished meat fruit, it's a chicken liver parfait inside a mandarin jelly. It looks as if it is a mandarin with the texture that I'll show you. It looks simple, but it takes three days to make. There's a, a huge amount of complexity behind that simplicity. The balance of the, the gel, which is mandarin flavored, to the parfait inside is the right ratio. So when you actually eat this and spread it on the grilled bread, you're getting the condiment with the parfait. Tell me about this dish, how it came about, and how it slots into the ethos of dining here. I mean, we, we always start looking backwards at history. We take inspiration from that. It sparks an idea that will tie into something that we think may work. So basically, how we make the meat fruit is chicken livers, butter, eggs. We make a, an alcohol reduction with shallots and garlic, a little bit of thyme. Day two, we put it into semi-sphere molds. You heat them together with a blowtorch put them together, put a spike in, wrap it in cling film, and then put it back in the freezer. Then we take a mixture here of um, mandarin juice, and then we dip the meat fruit in. Let it refreeze. When it's gone all frosty, we give it a second dip. Then we take it off, let it defrost overnight, and then they're ready the next day. Okay, well, here we go. I mean, look at that thing. It is just, it, it's uncanny how much like an orange it looks. Oh, look at that, it just comes apart. Okay, well, here goes the first bite. Mm. Right away, such a familiar flavor, like plastic foie gras terrine, chicken liver. Just a delicious mouthfeel, but it's very gentle. It's not, it's not really sort of dominating anything. And then you get this lovely, delicate gelatin wrap around it. But it just does add a sweetness and, and a really nice sort of, just a counterpoint to that richness of the fat. Then you've got this lovely bread, perfumed and, and um, scented with thyme and rosemary and garlic. It's not overpowering the way like a whole lobe of foie gras would be. So this must be on any carnivore's tour list because it's really complex. You do have that richness and the, the foie gras itself has that, those deep mineral rich flavors. But right at the end, you get this little crescendo of a of mandarin tang. It's not really citrusy, but there's a sweetness there. Absolutely delicious. There's a really pleasing textual contrast between the mousse and the crunchiness of the bread. It's very aromatic, really very delicious dish. I appreciate this immensely the first time I tried it, but after seeing how much craft and time and manpower goes into this thing, I'm really impressed with it. I like it because it, it's whimsical, it's playful, yet it's, you know, very serious cooking. And I guess that's kind of what the meat show is all about. Thank you for watching. For the next episode, click here now.